Welcome to Contextual Electronics, my name is Chris Campbell. Today we're going to be going over selecting traces, especially when you're doing something called rip up. Rip up is basically you've already laid down a bunch of tracks, you need to undo it. And it's an unfortunate but a realistic part of any layout because you need to go and redo things sometimes. So let's take a look at what this, uh, this old layout we have going on here. And we have our traces selected, but let's go and turn off things like backside silk and maybe the fab layers. So now we're just down to components and traces on top and bottom. This is also the layer we made a four layer board, but we won't be using the inner layers for this, uh, for this video. So uh, we showed in the last video, if you wanna go and just rip up everything, what we can do is we can select, we can select everything, right? So we click from right to left. This is what we showed last time. And then we can right click, hit select, and then filter selection, and then only do the tracks, right? So if we wanna do that, we could go and just do the tracks and either move them around by hitting M or we can just delete them. Nope, we'd have to do it again, sorry. Um, I hit escape and there we go. Uh, select, filter, it should save your filter selection there. And now we can just go and delete them and we're good to go. Okay, but what if we wanna do that on an individual basis? I also started showing this in one of the other videos about uh, changing the trace width, but it didn't show much else about it. So say we wanted to change from pad one of this part here, so this is C401, and we wanna change the, the drawing to to pad, uh, pad 11 of whatever this is, the U, U something. This is U something. <laughs> so we wanna change this, uh, this general area here. Now, first thing we can do is we can go and we can select the entire trace and delete it. And we can do that by selecting it like we did before, right? That's just selecting one part of the trace. So you see it, everything is basically made up of all these different individual segments. We can even, if we select from left to right, like we showed, we have to select the entire thing, but we can select just the individual segments by themselves. Now, if we wanna go and select the entire segment, we can click and then hit the letter I, and that selects the entire segment. Now we can very simply delete it, and we're back to square one. We have those, the rat's nest that appear, those white lines basically say, oh, okay, pin, pin one should be connected to pin one, to connect to pin one, connected to 11, however you wanna do that. And, oh, and up to pin seven as well. So I'm gonna undo that here. Okay, now I'm gonna show as well what we did in the last video. Say we wanna redraw a, a net with a thicker trace. I don't believe I actually, I didn't actually save the setup from that. So I'm gonna do a start X, and I'm gonna draw a custom now. So I'm gonna hit Q. That allows me to do a custom trace size. So I'm gonna double this and go to 0.512. There we go, and now it's twice as big. And what you see now is as, as I'm drawing over top of it, it's actually highlighting in front of it. And that's because it's basically removing the trace that it's drawing on top of. Now you can actually see a trace underneath there, it is not removing. And so this is kind of a perilous thing. Sometimes you'll, you'll have traces on top of traces. Now an important thing to know is that once you export once you export, so say, say I did complete this, there actually is a trace underneath here. You could tell by having multiple selections. So it's basically trying to say, okay, which track is this? There's, there's a couple underneath here, and it's trying to figure out which one's which. Okay, so there's a couple traces here. When I go and export this, this file as a Gerber, it's just gonna be like a, a shape that gets exported. So it ultimately doesn't care that there are two traces underneath here. However, as, you know, as a general good practice, I think it's good to try and get rid of the tracks that are underneath. So like something like this, I would usually try and go and get rid of that. So it's not always a perfect thing. It's not always gonna be a perfect, uh, a perfect redrawing of, you know, of one trace over another, right? Say I wanna just thicken up this trace. However, as long as you don't have, you know, too many things sticking out here, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Okay, so now say I wanna go and just select, uh, now I wanna go and delete individual traces. Uh, so let's say we wanna just delete this little segment here. Now, if I mouse over it, I have two options. I can either hit backspace or delete. If I hit backspace, it should just delete the segment itself. There we go, just the segment happened there. Now, if I undo that and I do the same thing, I hit delete, it should actually delete the entire segment here. So let's see what happens. So that deleted the entire trace from this big trunk over to here. Right. If I wanted, and again, if I wanted to delete all of the traces, I click anywhere, I hit I to select all the traces, and then I can hit delete. Let's also select and right click to see what our options are here. Okay. So we have, uh, so we have different selection options. Right. This is the copper connection. We have the whole net, and we have trivial connection. In this case, is U. That's what we're showing here. So that's what actually happens when you hit the delete key. So if I want to just hit, if I just select and then hit U. It should just select that trivial connection. Let's try another one here. So let's go right, uh, select. Oh, actually, that's a different trace, sorry. Let's go back to here. We'll select, 
this little segment here. Right click, hit select, and let's see, now let's have the entire net. Now what this means is that if, if this was, well, maybe we can find it actually. So there are multiple versions. Let's switch over to the V-ground. So now if we select just this one, and we right click, we hit select, and we hit I, it's just gonna be everything's connected to this individual net here. Great. But there's another one up here. You see all of these are connected to V-ground all the way up here. So if I right click, select, go to the select submenu and hit whole net, it should highlight everything that's V-ground. Let's see. And now everything that's V-ground has, uh, has been selected, and we can go and hit delete. Now you might want to do that if you had, say you were redrawing a ground plane, or maybe in this case, you know, I wanted to actually convert everything to be connected to the ground plane. So like when we added, so if we turn on the, uh, the inner and bottom, or the ground and power layers here, right? So if I had previously drawn everything to be connected uh, directly with uh, GND, right? So you see here, everything was, Previously, everything was drawn to be connected uh, point to point. Now I might want to select it, select everything that is connected to ground, and then go and delete it. And that's a really good, that's a really useful way to, you know, transition from a two-layer to a four-layer board. So there's lots of options here when you're drawing and redrawing and ripping up traces in KiCad. I think, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's a natural part of any design. Because you're going to figure out, you know, sometimes there's a better way to do things. Sometimes there's just, uh, you know, a mistake you make. Sometimes there, you have to move parts around. All these things are very realistic scenarios in KiCad. So if you want to learn more about how to do layout and how to make some of these decisions, we do this over at contextualelectronics.com. And if you want to talk more about the selection criteria and how you can actually add to the features or figure out more of the features, you can go to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kicad.info. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk to you soon.